Five signs you are under a curse. Many Christians do not actually realize they are operating under a curse. They think that the things that are happening in their lives are actually normal. The fact that they do not work, the fact that there's no marriages in their family, the fact that their families are dying before time, the fact that they are moving without any direction, without any purpose. And in this video, I will give you five signs to check if you are under a curse and I will show you how to break that curse. Number one, it has to be poverty. Now, when I talk about poverty, I'm talking about the inability to secure work or employment. I'm talking about the inability to, you know, to live the life that you desire to live. When you live a life from hand to mouth, where you'd never have enough, where even if your, your salary is a lot, it just never lasts throughout the end of the month. By the middle of the month already, you do not know, you do not have anything. You are wondering, but what happened to my money? What is happening to my money? That is because you are under a curse. In your family, your grandmother was poor. Your mother was poor. Your uncles are poor. It is not normal. It is a curse. And people end up even not being able to secure pro proper jobs because they are under a curse. Remember, a lot of people think that being poor means that God is happy with you. And I know that they are confused with the scripture that says, blessed are those who are poor. It actually says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, not poor in the flesh, not poor in terms of your ma the material things that you have, not poor in the physical. It talks about a person who has spiritual hunger, a person who hungers for the things of God. The fact that you are physically poor, it, it's, it's not a blessing. It is not a blessing. It is a curse. And the Lord says, my people perish because they lack knowledge. The fact that you don't actually realize that this poverty that you are actually going through, it's a curse. Remember, it is the same Lord who says he finds pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. He says, you shall lay gold as dust. Already that should tell you that the Lord wants every single Christian to be prosperous. He says, Paul says, I pray that you prosper as your soul prospers. So not only does God want you to attain a spiritual prosperity, he also wants you to have physical prosperity. So when you are seeing that, no man, I am living under poor conditions. There is a curse. It could be generational. It could be a thing that is happening within the vicinity of your family, or it could be a bloodline curse. And if you notice that you fall under this category, you need to break that curse. Number three, it definitely has to be premature death. A lot of families are under this curse and in their heads, they believe that it is the Lord that is actually taking people away from them or the Lord is taking their loved ones away from them. Remember, the Bible says that the Lord has long suffering. He doesn't want anybody to perish. So God does not have any desire for anybody who is not yet saved to die because he wants to present them with the opportunity to be saved. So do you actually realize that when you die before your time, it is actually a curse. Some people's families are cursed that every two years somebody dies or every time when a person turns a certain age, they die. Let's say, for example, at the age of 35, or let me say, if you're a South African, you will know that in the entertainment industry, there is this weird pattern that when somebody reaches the age of 35, suddenly they just die. It's a pattern. It's a curse. It is a curse. So in, if you're in your family, you can see that at this specific age, somebody dies or every time after two years or in the month of August, somebody is dying. There is definitely an active curse that you will have to break. Yes, there is a curse that you will have to break because it is these premature deaths that show you that there is a curse that is actually active. The Lord, 
He desires that we live long. Remember, the Bible says that the, the righteous will flourish in their old age. So God desires that we live long, that we see our great-grandchildren, that we pass these blessings to them. Remember, in, in the book of Genesis, they lived long. They were able to see their great-great-great-grandchildren. They lived long. It is only us whose life expectancy has gone down because we, th this earth is cursed. We are under a curse. Okay, not, I'm not under a curse, no. I mean, I have accept, accepted the Lord Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior, so I cannot be under a curse. But basically what I'm saying, if you can see that in your family there is so much premature death, people are dying before their time, people are dying in a specific month or every like at every interval, people are dying after two years, you definitely need to break that curse. Or if you see a specific gender is dying a lot, maybe your uncle's, your father died, then it was your uncle, then it was your uncle, and then your uncle, and then your brother. Then it means that this specific gender in your family is under attack. It's not normal that only one gender dies. If death is normal in your family, everybody must die. It must not just be your uncle or your father or your brothers. It means that that specific gender is under attack. Number four, believe it or not, if you don't have direction you have no purpose you are definitely under a curse you are definitely under a curse because it means that you are just loitering around this life you are moving around you have no direction you have no purpose you do not know what career to pursue you do not know which town to live in you do not know who to marry you have no purpose because you are under a curse and most of those people are people whom destinies have been stolen you know when a witch bewitches you to a point where you can't even think you don't even know what you are here for you don't have dreams you don't have ambitions it's because your destiny was stolen the enemy stole your destiny somebody is living in your destiny somebody has stolen your potential and they are living it out yes just in case you didn't know that it's possible for somebody who had who has no direction who is loitering around do you know those guys who lives in the who live in the township they are always on the streets always chilling at some corner those people are under a curse they do not know what to do with their lives they they it's not that they lack employment it's not that there are no opportunities they are just under a curse that is the thing that is causing them to loiter around this is why they end up becoming gangsters. This is why they end up becoming thieves, robbing people of things because they are under a curse. They were cursed by somebody that as for this one, they will not amount to anything. They will not amount to anything. Whatever that they try, it fizzles out because you are under a curse. There is a curse. There is an altar that is speaking against your life. And if you are this person whose life has no direction, you do not know what to do with your life. You do not know what to pursue. You definitely have to take this thing up in prayer. You need to pray. You need to fast for the Lord to reveal to you what your destiny is, what your purpose is, because it is not normal for you to not have direction. Remember in the book of Jeremiah, the Lord says, Jeremiah, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you as a prophet unto nations. That means that all of us, every single person here on earth, you have a divine destiny, a divine destiny from heaven. And it means that you are cursed if you are not living in that destiny. It means that something has blinded you to not actualize to whom God planned you to be. So if you see that you are definitely in this category, you need to pray. You need to fast for the Lord to reveal to you what your destiny is. Now, number five, last but not least. Believe it or not, if there are no marriages in your family, you are under a curse. Yeah, I know you might be saying, well, I don't desire marriage. I don't want to get married. My mother was not married. My aunt is not married. It's a curse. It is a curse because you need to understand that marriage on its own is an institution that helps you actualize the blessings of the Lord in your life. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Bible says that a three-quart fold is not easily broken. It also says that one will chase a thousand, two will put ten thousand to flight. It says the reward of two is better than one. 
So already that tells me that marriage is an advantage. The institution of marriage helps me to operate at my optimum best. So if you say, I don't desire marriage, I don't want to be married, or you even desire marriage, it's just that marriage is not coming to you. You are under a curse. Especially if the women in your family are having children before marriage. All of them have children with different men. All of them are single mothers. Definitely, that's a curse at work. It is a curse at work that has stopped your marital destiny from actualizing. Believe it or not, trust me, if there is no marriages in your family, if there is divorce in your family, if people, like, just before they do their wedding celebration, suddenly there is a separation. Like they were really believing that they were trusting God. The man came, he paid the bridal price, and then suddenly, boom, the marriage is over. It's because of a curse that is active, that is running in the family. And it has to be broken. Marriage is an institution for the blessings of the Lord to be actualized in your life. Believe it or not. Marriage was created to make you better. Remember, the Bible says that it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a suitable helper. That means that every single man, they are disadvantaged. The only time they become advantaged is when they have found their wife. Yes, because for somebody to need help, it means that they are not able to fulfill destiny without that person. That's why you need a wife. That's what the Bible is saying, is, is telling us that the reward of two is better than one. It is telling you that by myself, I will chase a thousand, but with my husband, we will put 10,000 to flight. Marriage is a blessing. And if there is no marriages in your lineage, in your family, there is a curse that has to be broken. Now, if you found yourself in this list, trust me, you have a lot of work to do. There is fasting you need to do. There is praying that you need to do. And there are altars that you need to destroy. And one of the problems that many Christians do after breaking a generational curse, you do not release a blessing. You need to make sure that as a Christian, after you break a curse, release a blessing. Replace that curse with a blessing. Don't just say in the name of Jesus, I pray against poverty. I destroy poverty. And then you make the mistake of not releasing a blessing, such as the work of my hands is blessed. The Lord shall bless my basket. The Lord will bless everything that concerns me. My finances are blessed. I am wealthy. I am rich. The Lord delights in my prosperity. It is important that you, with the same energy you use to break a curse, you must use that same energy to release a blessing. Okay. So don't make that mistake of just binding the devil and not speaking what you want to see. Remember, the Lord spoke what he wanted to see after the earth was void without any form. He said, let there be light and there was light. So the Lord spoke what he wanted to see. So also you after breaking these curses and these generational curses and, you know, all of these bad things that the enemy is enforcing in, into Christians lives. You need to speak a blessing. You need to say, my children are blessed. My home is blessed. My bones are healed. My blood is clean. I am prosperous. I am the head. I am not the tail. I have purpose. I will actualize in the name of Jesus. These are declarations that you have to declare. Declare it until it materializes. Declare it until you see it. It is very important don't be a Christian that is oblivious. We don't only bind. Remember, the Bible says whatsoever you bind will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose will be loosed in heaven. So I should not only just bind and that's it. I need to loose things that have been bound by the enemy. If it was your marriage, declare, my marriage is going to locate me. My marriage is coming to me. My husband will see me. If your, your marriage was destroyed, my marriage is being set free in the name of Jesus. So don't be an oblivious Christian who doesn't have the correct knowledge when it comes to these spiritual etiquettes. So thank you so much for watching. If you loved this video and you would want to learn more curses, other indications or other signs 
that maybe you might have not found yourself here and you are seeing other things and you are suspecting that I might be under a curse. Comment for part two and I will make another video to explain these things. My name is Sister Joy. I'm the girl behind Jacob Jesus Joy. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Be part of this family. Shalom.